Hi guys, Judy Fine here from Online with Judy Fine. Thank you for stopping by. Today I want to talk to you about mouth shapes and how they can be used to improve your flow, your richness, your tone, the role of your voice um, to really make the difference between good and great singing. I'm going to talk you through three different mouth shapes and I'm going to share a snippet of a vocal exercise from the singer athlete workout series that goes with each mouth shape that's the way all the exercises in that workout series go they're they're each targeted toward a specific goal if you want access to the singer athlete workout series yourself you can become an online member it's super affordable and there is the audio library there is a video archive of tutorials and other things there's a singer starter course these are all things that are included in your membership super great value packed membership if i'm allowed to say that about my own membership Another thing I want to let you know before I get into the meat of this video, um, I have a, an online workshop that I've offered a couple of times now. It's called Foundations of Singing, where I cover the two most important foundational aspects of great singing. I'm now offering a pre-recorded version of that presentation for free. So all you have to do is sign up for it. You get access by link and you can watch it as much as you want and at your own leisure. So if you want to check that out, there'll be a link in the description. All right, so let's get to mouth shapes. Okay, the first mouth shape we're going to cover is ah. Ah is a seemingly easy mouth shape. We sing ahs pretty easily, but what we don't do is, is apply that mouth shape sometimes to other vowels. So, for example, if I want to sing an E and somehow it's feeling pinched and not open enough, one option could be to hold my mouth in ah position and sing the E. E, ah, E. Changing the shape of your mouth will change the quality of the sound coming out of it. You have to decide through trial and error if that's a sound that you think enhances the song at that moment, whatever you're working on. The other thing to remember about the opposition is that when you're practicing an all ah exercise like the snippet you're about to try, it gives you the chance to practice keeping your tongue relaxed. A tense tongue is never helpful, ever. And we tense our tongues a lot without realizing it, especially as notes go higher. So the opposition means not only that your, your jaw is long, but that your tongue is flat and resting dead weight almost on the bottom of your mouth to be your tongue behind your bottom teeth. Ah, e, ah. So opposition, when I say opposition, what I mean is a long opening of your mouth and your tongue resting on the bottom of your mouth. Ah, lots of space inside, relaxed tongue. Give this little snippet of an ah exercise a try. Here we go, the simple ah range exercise. Starting notes, and here we go. should all be your speaking voice, just speaking on pitch. So you can find the second mouth position by saying the word yeah. Yeah automatically makes me raise my upper lip, feels like my the roof of my mouth is spread, and the soft palate, the the top of the back of my mouth is raised. Some people call this an inner smile. Yeah. This position is particularly good for higher notes, opening up higher notes, and especially the higher part of your chest voice, the upper chest voice or your mixed voice, whatever you call it. It actually is one of the ways that you can extend your chest voice as you're moving upward in your range. So this snippet of exercise is all in yeah, it's called yeah octave. And it gives you a chance to practice this mouth position and you'll see how different it is you'll see that it actually helps you access the place in your face where higher notes resonate more your treble notes resonate more yeah it's different than ah uh. one other thing i want you to keep in mind as you're trying this next exercise it's really tempting to tighten up your face for this one right i just i mentioned raising your upper lip 
and spraying the roof of your mouth. And this can all create tension. One way that some students can break that tension is by relaxing their face and their mouth position as I'm changing keys on the piano. So if you hold it there the whole time, you're going to start to feel really tense. Again, you can use the yeah position for other vowels. It doesn't always have to be an eh sound. You can try that mouth position to see if it helps you open up other vowel sounds. It will. You just have to decide through trial and error which one you think works the best for whatever application you're using it for. All right, so give this exercise a try. Next up is the yeah octave. You want to feel like the roof of your mouth is spread for this exercise, and don't be afraid to lift your upper lip a little. You just don't want too much tension in your face, but it's okay if there's a kind of smile going on inside your throat. It sounds like this. Yeah, 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 yeah,